800 animals. How much milk do you produce per day, roughly, in total? Around 24,000 liters. This is the compost barn system where the cows stay on bedding. It's all about animal welfare. It's highly regarded because the cow has access to wherever she wants. Nowadays, we work 24 hours a day with the fans on. Why? The bedding has a lot to do with stocking density. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Santa Fe Agro Institute channel. I'm here at the Arcego farm with the veterinarian Vinicius, and now we have arrived at their home where they eat, rest, and live. And here, Vinicius, I'll ask the first question. What system is this? This is the compost barn system where the cows stay on bedding. It's all about animal welfare. It's highly regarded because the cow has access to wherever she wants. She lies down wherever she wants. When she feels like eating, she comes to the feed alley and eats. When she wants to lie down, she goes to the bedding, lies down, and ruminates. A frequently asked question on our social media is which system to choose. Sometimes people are unsure. Should I go for freestall or should I go for compost? Which one should I use? Why did you choose this system and not freestall, for example? Well, each system has its peculiarities. We opted for the compost barn for animal welfare reasons. In our opinion, when the cow is free, she has more access to the feed alley. She rests better. So we adopted this system for those reasons. I see. And does the economic aspect also influence this decision? Yes, yes. The system is a bit more economical compared to the freestall. And here, in this particular system, has there been any issue where you thought, man, this happened and it was a bit difficult to resolve, but we managed to solve it. I don't know. Maybe the bedding wasn't drying or something like that. So... At the beginning, when the system started, there was more access to sawdust, more material. So the cost per cubic meter was lower as well. Nowadays, we have a bit of difficulty getting this material and the price has also increased. In winter, when we have more humidity, it's a bit more complicated in terms of management. What does that management involve? It's about moving that bedding, working with it. Here on the farm, we work with three milking sessions. So after each milking session, when the cows leave the lot, we go in with the machinery and work the bedding. We turn it over to ensure adequate fermentation. I see. And how did you work out the management with the staff, with the farm team telling them, look, the management wasn't being done correctly? How did you find the right way that worked here? Well, it's about training and motivating the operational staff because everything depends on them. So we assess the softness of the bedding, the depth of the bedding turnover. This allows us to provide more comfort for the animal. If the bedding is nice and soft, the cow will lie down. If the bedding is a bit harder, the cow avoids lying down. That's why it always needs to be turned over. It needs to have a good appearance for the cow to lie down there. And, for example, if you come here and look at the cows the way they are, can you tell if it was done correctly or not? Yes, because if the bedding isn't favorable, the cows won't lie down. And the way it is today, they are lying down. Those that aren't lying down are eating. There are some cows in heat, but that's normal day to day. Great. And, for example, if she doesn't lie down, if she starts spending too much time standing, what happens later in the milking parlor? His can lead to a drop in production. The cow doesn't have enough time to rest. She doesn't ruminate. It also negatively impacts her locomotion system. However, one of the attractive aspects of this system is the floor. We have less flooring, so there's less impact on the cow's locomotion system. So you mean that the cow's hooves would have fewer problems than if it were in a freestall system, for example? Exactly because it allows her to step more comfortably. It's softer for her to step on, and her hooves will be better preserved. Not that there aren't hoof problems. I'm sure there's a hoof trimmer. We have a monthly hoof trimming routine. There's a routine. Every month we work with hoof trimming. The hoof trimmer comes and applies a weekly hoof bath. Very good. And here, this is where they stay all day, right? Why are so many fans running? It's about cooling the cows, but also mainly for drying the bedding. Nowadays, we work 24 hours a day with the fans on. Why? The bedding has a lot to do with stocking density. We notice daily that those lots that are more overcrowded with more animals per square meter 
have more difficulty with bedding drying. So the fan helps to dry the bedding. So the fan is an investment for you because if the bedding doesn't dry, problems start appearing on the farm. That's right. Then you start having hoof problems, mastitis issues, and so on. It's interesting to talk about mastitis because there are many factors that can lead to a cow developing or having mastitis. Yes. And sometimes there are some details. For example, you just mentioned the fans. If the fans aren't adequate, if there aren't enough fans and the bedding stays wet, it will cause mastitis in the cows. Exactly. So these are small details that sometimes the producer on the other side might be looking at this video and thinking, isn't it a lot of money spent on fans? No, it's an investment. It's a necessary investment. Looking at this herd, I believe, as I see here, the cows are wearing collars. I was going to talk about genetics, but let's talk a bit about the collars. Why are the cows wearing collars? So, we are currently working with 100% of the animals being monitored. Given the farm's scale, there's no way we can constantly watch each animal. So, these collars provide us with information on the animal's health and heat cycles. Every morning, I pull up a report on sick cows, cows with decreased rumination, cows with decreased activity, and those returning to heat. So, all of this is possible through technology. How many cows are in lactation? Today there are 806. 806 cows, and what's the average milk production per day? Around 30 liters. 30 liters of milk. So something that's clear to me, but maybe not to those watching for the first time. If a cow is being mistreated, does she produce milk? Does she produce 30 liters of milk per day? No, just say she doesn't, because the animal needs the right conditions. If the animal is deprived of food, if she doesn't have comfort in her housing, the animal won't produce what she's genetically predisposed to produce. I understand. So you're telling me that if I visit a farm and someone tells me, just say my farm has an average of 30 liters of milk per day, then the cow is producing 30 liters of milk per day. I can be assured because I know that this cow is well taken care of. Yes, indeed. There's no way around it. Nature doesn't allow a mistreated cow to produce that much milk. This is something the market is showing. Some movements are bringing this up, saying that animals are being mistreated. The first thing that comes to my mind is that if I'm being mistreated, for example, at my job, I won't be able to perform at my best. No, you can't. There's no way. She only produces the amount of milk she does because she's well taken care of. Here, you look at these animals and you don't see any suffering. You see the animals lying down. You see calmness. There's no agitation, no shouting, no one hitting them. The animals are all calm. Exactly. And this also makes the farm produce so much milk. Exactly. 800 animals. How much milk do you produce per day, roughly, in total? Around 24,000 liters. 24,000 liters, you can see that there has been significant progress. When I watched your interview on the Milk Channel, you mentioned that the peak was 22.9 thousand liters. Exactly. How long ago was that, roughly? About three months ago. In the last three months, you've already reached 24,000 liters of milk. Exactly. Now, you all can't feel it here, folks, but it's really cold in this region. And without a doubt, does the cold help or not? Yes, yes. D dairy cows suffer a lot from the heat. So if we don't have efficient ventilation both in the area where they stay during the day and in the holding area, later we'll see that in the milking structure, these cows will be affected. They will produce less milk and they will have reproductive issues because all of these are effects of heat stress, thermal stress. But this was something that back when everything was starting, we didn't have this information, or at least it wasn't widely known. People didn't have this awareness. When did you realize that you needed to pay more attention to heat stress? Folks, we have a heat stress problem, and we're going to have to solve it. When did you notice this, and what did you do to solve it? So, when the farm started confining the animals, we began to have more information at our fingertips. Seeing this, we noticed that the cows exposed to heat on hotter days reduced their milk production. This, of course, has a negative impact on the farm's cash flow. So, we realized that we really needed to provide this comfort to the cows. We need ventilation, we need sprinklers. On hot days, we saw the milk production curve fluctuating a lot. 
So from that point on, we started paying more attention to this aspect of comfort. What was the first step you took regarding ventilation and cooling these animals? What did you do first? So we installed sprinkler lines above the feed alleys where they eat ventilation in the feed lane. And where they also spend part of their time is in the holding area. Why? When the animals leave the barn, they go and stay in the holding area, waiting for milking time. And there, you have a concentration of animals. So, we have a buildup of heat there. Therefore, we also need an efficient cooling system in that area. All the animals are identified. They all have ear tags. What's the importance of this identification? So, the milking machine reads each animal. Each animal is chipped. It has a responder in its ear. And when it arrives for milking, the machine recognizes that animal and then sends its production data to a software system. This is so we can monitor them. For example, let's move this cow to a different lot. How is she performing? Many times, we cross-reference milk production data with the reports provided by the caller. We can detect diseases earlier. So, we don't let the cow's condition deteriorate. We're always one step ahead. When the cow starts showing signs, we immediately start treatment. This has a significant impact on welfare because the cow doesn't become debilitated. We can diagnose diseases earlier. Each cow has a history. So we analyze and interpret these individual histories. Whether it's to see if this animal is standing out among so many others, we can identify these determining factors. Besides all the technical aspects, technologies, we also need teamwork and employee engagement. Why? Each operational area demands a great deal from people. So if they're not motivated by the processes, we won't achieve positive results. I understand. So training, team management, and people management are fundamental. Exactly. It's the people who make all this happen too. They are in the day-to-day -day operations, and today's workforce needs guidance, training, and quality information so that when someone is working alone, for example, the people currently working in the feed lane, they know exactly what to do. There can't be any doubt. Exactly. Let's go take a look over there just to check out this process here on the farm. So folks, you can see here the animal is drinking water. Vinicius, what is the importance of water for the animal, for the cow? Why is water important for the cow? Well, water is the primary food for the animal. Why? A large part of a living organism requires water. A significant portion of the milk volume is made up of water. So if this cow doesn't have access to good quality water, she won't produce what she needs to produce. Why is she here? Why is she positioned at this spot, this water trough? What is the importance of having water close to where she's eating? Well, it's about easy access. She comes off the feed lane, turns to the side, and there's water available for her right there. So when she feels the need to drink, she has free access to it. And it's important that this water is in good condition for drinking. And it's no good just having water available if there's no routine for cleaning these troughs. I see. So one important thing is that if you're at a restaurant and you're eating a plate of food with dry food at 35 degrees and you don't have a glass of water to drink, you won't be able to eat. You just don't eat. You don't eat. In this case here, if she doesn't eat, she doesn't produce milk. That's right. If she doesn't eat or doesn't drink water. So, it may seem like a simple or trivial thing, but if there isn't a place for her to drink water close to where she eats, it could have an impact. Exactly. And also, when she comes out of the milking parlor, it's important to have water available because after milk is taken, she has a water deficiency. So she needs it as well. A large part of the cow's water intake happens after milking. I understand. So folks, for this video, our challenge is the following. I want you to take pictures, show us your water troughs, where you work, if you have a dairy farm. Take a picture of the water trough so we can see it on our Instagram, on our Facebook. Share it because I think this is interesting. Sometimes we don't give water the value it deserves, but as Vinicius just said, if there's no water, there's no milk either. So these are small details. We talked about the fan, the water trough, comfort, data, the collar, and animal identification. But if you don't have all of this, 
the farm might not reach 30,000 liters of milk per day. So this is the minimum you need to do to reach the level that the Arcego farm has achieved. Now take a picture of the water trough posted on social media. It will be a pleasure to share how you work with your animals. Agreed? A big hug and see you in the next video.